Imagine yourself in the worst of all possible situations. Imagine yourself as one of the disciples or as one of the women who followed Jesus. Imagine that he is no longer among you because he's dead. You saw him die. You saw them bury him in the tomb. There is no doubt. There is no hope. There is no future. You huddle together behind the locked door, fearing that those who tortured and killed him will come and find you next. What will happen to you, to your family, to your friends? There is no doubt. There is no hope. There is no future. You heard him say when he was alive that the Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of the sinners be crucified and on the third day raised again but you have forgotten those words or at least they hold no hope for you now the horror of the crucifixion is still fresh in your mind you see and hear him in agony there dying right in front of you when there was nothing you could do you think about the part of it and wonder what you could have done differently. You have been frightened and hiding. But now, it is Sunday. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came round to Simon Peter and to the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and I don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple around Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the stripes of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from the scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the, the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white, seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord out of the tomb and I don't know where they have kept him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it that you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, If, sir, if you're taking him away, tell me where you are putting so I can go and get him. Mary. Rabboni. In Aramaic, the word Rabboni means teacher. Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to our father. Go instead to my brother and tell them that I am ascending to my father and your father, my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. On the evening of that very first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fears of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, 
receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sin, they are forgiven. If you do not, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, also known as Didmus, meaning twin, one of the twelve was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord! No, unless I see the nail marks in his hand, and put my finger where the nails were, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. S see my hand. Reach out and put your finger here. If you do not believe, see, and put your finger into my side. Stop doubting and believe. My Lord and my God, If you do not believe, now you have seen and believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and still believed. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Imagine yourself in the best of all possible situations, the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who was dead, is now alive again. By the power of the living God, Jesus Christ has risen from the dead and is alive forever. The terror of yesterday is gone and the fear of tomorrow has vanished. Because of what Jesus did on the cross, mankind can be forgiven of sin. And because he has been raised from the dead, Mankind can live forever. There is no doubt. We have a hope. We have a future. God, God bless, bless you and happy Easter. Easter. Jesus is alive. Happy, happy Easter. Easter. Hallelujah. Come on, just put your hands together to celebrate God. Come on, come on, come on. Put your hands together. <laughs> Hallelujah. We bless God for our beautiful, lovely, young actors in the house. You know, I just want you to celebrate them one more time and put your hands together. Okay, next we're going to be having a spoken word presentation by a friend of the house, a friend of mine. Just put your hands together as we welcome Otto Matthew. Let's put your hands together. was more than two pieces of wood and three nails. The cross was more than the prince of peace and two thieves. 
It was more than Judas' lips on Jesus' cheeks when greetings. Rabbi sleeps between betrayers' lips, the cross. It was more than that crowd that still had the taste of hosannas on their mouths when they screamed, crucify him. A, a carpenter. I was familiar with six and broken things took the shipwreck of humanity on his back. Even as God turned his back, for all like sheep has gone astray, but upon the lamb, God laid the punishment for our sins and our transgression. You could see sins, aggressions. It wasn't two nails or three nails that hung him to the cross. It was my sins and yours. It was love that hung him to that cross. A crown of thorns placed on the head of royal skin. The prince of peace was skinned. How did he not say a word? How was he quiet through the whole process? Probably was true what they said. Love definitely has a name. It is true what they say. Love definitely has a name. Humanity spits on divinity. Slaps to one cheek and he would turn the other. Pilate gave the other and he was stripped naked. He who was once clothed in glory experienced glory. How did he not say a word? Nails went through his hands and feet. How did he embrace the feet and forfeit his throne? Why would he do all this for me and you? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He breathed his last and laid down his life. There was joy in hell for death finally won. The Messiah fell and there will be no good news to tell. The Prince of Peace defended into hell. But except a corn of thorn. But except a corn falls down and dies. You can put life in a grave where he would bear death as a disguise. But he wouldn't stay there. After he had paid the price, I saw him rise as though he was never dead. Three days and three nights just as he said, Mary... Mary, why are you looking for the living among the dead? He is not here. For he has risen as he said. Come, see the place where the Lord laid. He is risen. He is risen. He is risen. So I rise. For I am now his and he is mine. I drink of his new wine. I allow his, my life to fall in line. Because he makes everything fine. He gives meaning to my one life. No need for nine. For he makes me a wonder and a sign. He is risen to arise out of my state of stunted spiritual stagnancy and startled by the sting of sin, sinful stench. I arise out of my pitiable and poor position, provoked by my poor perception of possible potentials picked up in my person. I arise out of my frustration of my fearful and fleeting fractured future. I arise out of the condition of confusion configured by my connection to the condemnation created by my constant craving for calamity. I arise from my ashes of my past to embrace the beauty of a glorious future he is risen so I arise and I let his love govern my heart I submit to his profession and let him make my life state of the art I let his word guide my feet and I let his light direct my path so I arise never to fall again to sin and failure I arise as he rose I both principalities and powers I arise from now henceforth battle will not beat me people will not belittle me Money cannot buy me. Even government cannot silence me. Sickness cannot stop me. Death cannot destroy me. Hell cannot handle me. He is risen, so I have risen. He is risen, so I rise. I rise and worship the one that loved me to death.
The same power that crushed the enemy. Come on, just put your hands together to celebrate the Lord and give him all the praise that is to his name. Tell somebody beside you, Jesus is reason. Jesus is reason. Jesus is reason. Jesus is reason. He's alive. We want to do another song. This song is titled Resurrection Power. I want you to be upstanding. Come on, come on, jump on your feet this morning. As you sing about the resurrection power in the name of Jesus. Come on. Put your hands together. Hey! Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! Are you back? Walk your hands for ye people and shout oh! unto God. Everybody say it with a voice of triumph. Oh! oh, oh. With a voice of triumph, come on, come on. Oh, 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 oh. listen, you are the everlasting God. Shine your light for all the world to see. Yeah, you are the hope of broken hearts. You woke a grave to save humanity. Hallelujah. Come on. Jesus is alive. Hey, oh, clap your hands. Your hands. Yeah. Oh, ye peace. And shout. And shout. Come on. Come on. Oh, oh, clap your hands. Put your hands together, everybody. Oh, Come on. People. Give the Lord a shout. The voice of trial. The voice of trial. Oh, 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 oh. With the voice of triumph. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Listen. You are the hope of broken hearts. You overcame the grave of humanity. Sing it. Are you ready? Come on. Everybody, 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 he's alive, he's alive. Oh, clap your hands. All oh, you people, come on, come on. Give the Lord a shout. Come on. Oh, clap your hands, everybody. Oh, you people. And shout. With the voice of triumph, everybody say. With the voice of triumph, oh, say, oh, you're alive, you're alive in me. Resurrection power, I'm alive in you. Is the rest 
Resurrection power You gotta confuse the enemy. They are those Kalamba Yande. Oh, you say they are those Kalamba Yande. And the enemy comes raining like a storm. What do you say? They are those Kalamba Yande. This is how we scare the enemy. Hey! Hey, hey, hey! Are you ready? Everybody run! Come on! Ah! Hey, hey, hey. Is anybody victorious in here? Come on! Shout it out! Say! Hey, hey, hey. One more time! One more time! Shout! Hey, hey, hey. 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 The enemy doesn't understand tongues, so come on! Hey, hey, this is your opportunity to confuse the devil. One more time. Permit me one more time. What do you say? Hey! Is anybody ready to scare the enemy? Shout! The resurrection power of Jesus is at work. Shout it out! Hey, hey, hey. Yeah! Yeah! Hey, hey, hey. Speak me now, say! Hey, hey, hey. I like the Arabia, Ra. Hey, hey. Judah, Wallet. Gani, Gani, Laja, Ogunle. We live for your name. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, lift your voice. Hey. I glorify the name of the Lord. Give him all the that is through his name, all the worship, all the glory, all the adoration. Hallelujah. You know, when people outside or people of the world hear us shout, they don't understand what Jesus has done for us, they don't know what he picked us from or where he picked us from they don't know they don't understand tell Taiji you, you don't know <laughs> you don't know what Jesus did for me hallelujah glory to his name just wave your hands and thank him and say thank you, Jesus hallelujah they have your seats in Jesus name I just want to present the last presentation stay blessed in Jesus name
Break every chain. Break every chain. Let the church sing. There is power. There is power. That is why we are here. So much power. hands together for Jesus. Let us clap for the King of all the kings and the Lord of all the lords, the bright and the morning star, the ancient of days, the root of Sharon, the lifted up of our heads. Let someone just make a joyful noise unto God. Because if Jesus did not rise again, if he did not what? Rise again. Then you won't be here. You are here because Jesus rose again. And the Bible said that we rose with him. You, so before now, you might have been downcasted. You might have slipped and fallen. You might have fallen short of the glory. You might be below standard. Before now, maybe not approved. <laughs> but today, 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 let someone make a joy.
is a day of victory. Yeah. Hallelujah. Because hell could not hold him. You need to understand that Jesus did not rise for himself alone. He rose for everyone. Amen? Hell was not just interested about Jesus, it was interested about you. Because he understood that as he was rising, he was rising with your breakthrough, with your healing, with your deliverance, with your testimony, with your next level. Is there someone here that knows that it is settled? Because Jesus rose again, it is what? If you are that person, say, it is settled. Say one more time. Say one more time. Say one more time. Before we sit, I want to read a scripture for us. In Romans chapter 8, 34. In Romans 8, 34, Bible says, Who is he that condemneth? Who is saying that it's not, it can't be done? Who is saying that you're not qualified? Who is saying it's not your turn? Who is saying it will not happen? Who is saying never? Who is saying over my dead body? <laughs> Who is the one that is saying not approve? Who is saying that it can't be you? It says it is Christ that died. Yeah, rather, that is risen again. Hallelujah. Not only died, he rose again. Who is even at the right hand of God? Who also maketh intercession for us? Tell your neighbor, I'm not alone. Say it one more time. It's not just sitting there, it's making intercession. Things you are not even aware of. Blessing, favor, promotion that you have not even come to your mind. Hallelujah. Amen. There is someone that will express a breakthrough after this service. Because Jesus is interceding on your behalf. It says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Today, God, there's a fusion, a connection, a bond that cannot be broken. It's bound together by love. Unconditional love. Undying love, unfailing love, constant love, full love. Shout, Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Say it one more time. Jesus loves me. Say it one more time. Jesus loves me. I hope you know that there's someone here that has captured the heart of Christ. That's taking all the love. There's someone here that Christ loved the most. Who's that person? Who's that person? It means you jump up and shout. Let me clap for just one more time. And I and I I think we should be having C4C and um, youth church join us more often. Amen. Let's clap for C4C, the teachers and all the organizers. Let's clap for the choir. Amen. Let's just clap for them. 
They brought a lot of flavor into the service. Amen. Jesus is alive. Jesus is what? Easter is about love. John 3.16 says, John 3.16, say, for God so loved the world. This season is all about love. It was his love being demonstrated in the life of Jesus Christ. Whenever I, I see that clip of when they put the hand of Jesus on the cross, and it was so graphic, they, they put the nail and they raised that hammer. By the time it's going down, I close my eyes. <laughs> I, I, even though I know it's a movie, I know it's not the real one, but I just can't watch and see that nail, that hammer hit the nail and enter someone's hand. Even though I know that it's a movie, I do what? I close my eyes. He didn't, he didn't draw his hand back. You, you understand what I'm saying? You know, like, even, even if you want to beat a child, say, bring, bring your hand. You do like this. Do you, mind, do, you mind, do you mind the hand is coming? With you? <laughs> yeah, bring the hand out. Say, say, it's a reflex action. Anyone will, will resist at that hour of pain. His hand was there. Hallelujah. See, I love to watch movies. And sometimes I watch all these spy movies, you know, uh, CIA, FBI, all this kind of and they, in the movie, they, 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 they say they train them to endure pain. But it's quite like most of those movies, when they hammer them well, <laughs> they leak the secret. <laughs> they say, well, it's enough. <laughs> but in the midst of all the pain, the tongues on his head, he remained Faithful in love with you. It says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believed in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. See, the mystery is that at this point, the Bible says, whilst we were yet sinners, love being demonstrated, I want to ask some questions because I know we have C4C. We have, so I will, I will throw it to the main church first before I ask C4C. What do you understand as love? I want to just give us, I want to hear what is love. Can love, I mean, I know that love is a word that I'm not sure one person can give a full definition of. So let's hear from someone. I want to hear from someone. What do you understand that love is? Just put your hand up. They'll give you a mic to speak. Yeah. Thank you. We can hear. We can hear. I heard a sound from you. Selflessness. Self. Selflessness. Selflessness. Amen. Let's clap for her. <laughs> love is to be selfless. Amen. Anyone, another person that has? Love is God. Love is God. Amen. Let's clap for that. But, you know, the, the next one, I want us to have, I, I don't want the word to just be short. I want to have a, you know, I want so we can have an understanding. I see a, a hand at the back. Unconditional show of affection. Thank you. Let's clap for that. Unconditional show of can please can someone can, can you explain that that again? Unconditional show of affection. Because you know some of us, you know, our school level is uh, so break that one down. What is unconditional show of affection? Okay, or someone can someone okay, can maybe okay, let me let me have a sister to respond to that. That's a man's a man's a, a man's view. I want to understand what does a woman understand when a love is 
unconditional and is what? Uh -huh. It's not just one. Love, unconditional affection. All together. Okay. So, there is, you can never show love without sacrifice. So when they say, I think the biggest part of love is sacrifice. At every point in time to express love, there must be a sacrifice. And as my brother said, unconditional. So it's not when you feel like it. Um, it, is, it is not dependent on how the other person is. Okay. That's why it's uncon it, it has no conditions. It is, it is a decision, it is an action that you take, irrespective of the circumstances that surround hmm. you. Let's, let's, she has nothing, but let's be clapping. Let, I, think, I think clap needs to be accompanying that Amen. before she lands. So, when I talked about sacrifice, if you think about it, it always costs you. If it, is an, if it is in expressing it by giving a gift, it will cost you money. Mm -hmm. If it is by spending time with the person or helping out, it will cost you your time, it will cost you effort. Even if it is about just doing what someone says, which is God's own biggest requirement for us of our expressing our love to him, which is obedience, it will cost you because sometimes when God says, get up and pray at 3 a.m., it costs you your sleep. So every time you say you're showing love, there must be a cost to it. Okay. Thank, let's clap for her for that. Still on the, on the maybe I want, I want a teenager to, uh, to, to move on that, to move next. Still on the same point, to a teenager on that, on that point. What does it cost you to show love? A teenager. Is it a teenager? Is for C4C. I'm coming to C4C. You'll be the first to, to speak for C4C. A teenager. Let's clap for them. We should be able to know teenager. If a teenager, any son that is 10, 11, we should be able to know that is, oh boy, you're not, wait for your turn. <laughs> Where's our, teen, our teenage teacher? Your students are dodging. Ah. It's okay, if teenagers cannot answer, uh, let's move to... It means, it means that you have to sacrifice for love. It shows that anytime you want to show love, you must, you, it, it must cost you something. Okay, let's, okay well, course, let, let's clap for it, let's clap for it. So, maybe our, our, our upgrade, maybe that question was a high-level question. Let me come back to the main church. What does it cost you to show love? Not teenagers anymore. Let's move to the main church. What does it cost you? What does it cost you to show love? Because that, that, that's one of the things we, we got to there, that it, it costs you something. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Resources, it costs emotions, it costs a lot of things. Amen. Let's clap for that. It costs you time, it costs you emotion. There's, I said, the sister on my on my right hand. It also costs you your boundaries. There are no boundaries, no limitations. It costs you your boundaries. There are things where you would not have gone to, what you would not have done. Let's clap for that. Let's clap for that. Okay. It costs you your ego, your self will. Who you really are, what you want to do. Sometimes you have to let go. It costs you love. ego. Yes. Let's clap for that. Let's, I'm, I'm, uh, this, this, this side is there. Uh, we have intelligent people there. <laughs> Just in addition, when we're talking about the love of Christ, the love of Christ, you have to give your total self. It costs you everything. 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 It costs you everything. Let's clap for her. The last one from, yeah, it from costs choir. You, it costs you money. It costs you your ATM pin. It costs, eh? you, it costs you money. Money is involved. There's no, you can't show love. I, I, he said love is sacrificial giving. That means that sometimes... It costs you pay. Pain from your bank account. There's a way he feels it. <laughs> the ATM pin. He feels it. Hallelujah. Let's, cl let's, cl let's clap for that. Let's clap for that. Amen. So now we can see it costs you money. 
It costs you your limits, your limits. It costs you your ego. It costs you your time. It costs your boundaries, your self-will, your emotions. Now let's put, let's put everything together. What it costs you to show love. Now, what did it cost Jesus to show love? What did it cost Jesus to, to show his love? His life. Let's clap for C4C. Let's clap for C4C. It cost Jesus his life. I'm sure everything that we mentioned earlier, Jesus did them. He went through, it cost him time to sit with people and be teaching them to show love. He went, he was going to a particular city. They'll call him, come here. He will, for love, he'll attend to that one. I mean, he went out of his ways. Amen? Place that he would, although he not sit and dine with them, he would join them and dine with them. So he, he cost him everything we mentioned, his emotion. He wept to show love. That means love, you know, took part of his emotional aspect. And he wasn't ashamed. Amen? He was stripped naked. Yet, he didn't, he didn't turn back. It's painful. It cost him pain. So it meant that if based on everything we have said, Jesus would have completed showing love at the point when they told him to to confess and say he's not king. Because he had done everything they were mentioned. The only thing he hadn't done was that to die. Hallelujah. I mean, everything we have spoken about, Jesus did everything, yet he was not enough. If you give time to someone, you have shown so much love. Ah, you don't know what I've done for that, that person. You, you, you will say, you try, oh. But for Christ, it was not what? Enough. Until he laid down his life. So I want to ask C4C. Let's come for C4C one more time. C4C. Intelligent. Smart. Professors. They are already posing. The professors are already posing like this. You know. <laughs> ask what you want. Come on, quick. Ask what you want. <laughs> How do you show love to your friends? I, I see a hand. The hand came down again. I want to know how do you show love? By sharing. By what? Sharing. Who's speaking? Who? Where? Okay, by sharing. Sharing what? Snacks. What you said is good. Let's, let's clap for her. You did well. But I want to know, what are you sharing? Sharing what? Snacks. <laughs> Which means that when you go to school and you have your, your last bar in your hand and you're hungry and you're about to drop it in your mouth, and say, share. Will you release it? I had no some from your last one. Your um, what well, the those drinks? What do they call it? Capri Yeah, your snacker is about to drop. So you share your food. Someone else. Ah, ah. So, so we're, we're saying no. Some people are saying no. They don't agree. <laughs> 
You oh. can show love by caring about your loved one. Let's clap for him. <laughs> by caring about your loved one. By being helpful to others. Being helpful to others. Let's clap for them. By being kind to others. By being kind to others. Let's keep clapping. By sacrificing life to others. By uh, sacrificing what? Rice. Life. I thought I had rice. But I can find the rice to others. <laughs> By being honest to others. Let's clap for the heart. By being honest. Hmm. By I think, being, see, by let, being let, selfless. By being selfless. Sifo is already preaching. I don't need to go further. Let's clap for Sifo. Let's. They were. They were on point. And I said. I said. We are professors there. Do you have a mic for someone? By showing kindness. By showing kindness. Hmm. Hallelujah. C for C. By teaching them what they don't know. Hmm. By teaching, teaching them what they don't know. By preaching the gospel to others. Hey, who's that? Who's that? Who, where are you? Preaching the gospel. Uh, come forward. Come forward. Ah. Let's, uh, let's rise and clap for this young man. Uh, uh, let's clap for him. Uh, preaching to others. Okay, can you give us a... Don't look at their face. Just imagine that one of your friends being naughty. And, that, and you want to tell that your friend that Jesus loved the person. Just a short word. Preach the person. You are the pastor of the day. <laughs> Don't look at their face. Just, just preach as you are. You, you, you want to preach someone. Don't be shy. Let's keep, 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 keep. Look, I'll hold the mic for you. Just talk. <laughs> just say it. Jesus love you. If I want to preach to my friend, I'll tell him Jesus love you. If your mom sends you a message, obey your mom. Don't follow bad boys. Always listen to your mom. You listen to your teachers in the school. Help your parents. Don't disobey your elders. Listen to your juniors and your seniors. Let's clap for Jesus for that. God bless you. What better way can you show love to preach to someone? Amen? I read the scripture. I also want to understand that C for C. They've, um, they've preached, they've finished the, the sermon. I'll just pick two scriptures. Ephesians 4.32. Ephesians 4.32. It says, And be ye kind one to another. Tender hearted. Forgiving one another. Even as God, for Christ's sake, had forgiven you. When they were mentioning kindness, they were calling and saying something, and I was saying, they are right, they are on point. I read another scripture in John 13, 34. John 13, 34. It says, a new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you that ye also love one another by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples if you love one another tell your neighbor I love you amen God's kind of love Hallelujah. Clap for yourself now. Don't say, mm. <laughs> Note that the love, the love that Jesus is talking about here is called agape love. 
And remember that when we were explaining, he said it's unconditional. That's the only love that is unconditional. That does not change if a person is nice to you, they're not nice to you. You know, it's easy in, our, in the other, other love, which is the other love, the general love of feelings, of emotion. If someone is nice to you, you in that one, you love them. Am I? If someone gives you gifts, you do what? You love them. Maybe if daddy always comes home when he's on his way, he buys ice cream. So the man they heard daddy's knocking the door, opening the door, everyone jumps up and they're screaming. And they're screaming, Daddy. Amen. My daughter said that's mommy. <laughs> You're not the one bringing ice cream, to mommy. We're keeping you in C4C more. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that didn't tell them the truth. You know, by, by. <laughs> that's not a shout hallelujah for that. That's, that's a child, pure hearted. They have no command like here. Hallelujah. So if the daddy comes with, with ice cream and he jump up and he runs, that, 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 that daddy he gives ice cream. The next day he comes again with ice cream and maybe they're watching TV, they jump and they run, that, that, that he gives ice cream. And on the third day, they hear the knock and they jump and running out, that, 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 and maybe one has got into the front and I'm still at the back and they get there and find that there's no ice cream on daddy's, in daddy's hand. You find that the last one, the mate he sees the one tongue. <laughs> Lana will not even leave the TV, you know? You know, before, it cost them something. You know, they say, love costs you. So it cost them their TV, you know, that clip. They don't want to miss that or pause. And if they can't pause the video, then it cost them to leave and come. The moment... That one is the emotional love. But God's kind of love, there's ice cream, there's a snacker, no snacker, amen. You do what? You love. You don't love because of what they give to you. You don't love because someone is nice to you. You love because God commands you to love. Amen? Tell your neighbor that God commanded us to love. You know, in, in the Old Testament, God gave ten commandments. But after Jesus rose again, he gave an additional commandment. That is in John 13, 24. A new commandment. Amen? A new I give unto you that you love one another as I loved you, that ye also love one another. Love is what is a commandment. You break it, you sin. Amen? I'm happy with you. I smile with you. I'm not happy. I turn my back at you. No, no. You are commanded to love. And love is expressed by showing kindness. By being sensitive to your sister's feeling. You don't beat your sister. Amen? You don't take... You know, I ask the child, why do you like... Always harassing the other one, say, eh. I'm bored. <laughs> you are bored. <laughs> so it needs ex excitement. <laughs> By harassing someone else. As, as, no. Love is, you have to be interested in the other person's feeling. C for C, do we agree? Ask 
asked, I asked a child one time, and the young lady says, I don't like super person in my school. I said, why? I just don't like her. What did she do? I just don't like her. So, and, I, and I was wondering, I mean, primary school, primary school, why would you like someone? You just don't like a person. Jesus commands us to love everyone. Love who? Everyone. See, the difference between when Jesus, see, when Jesus came, remember the, the story about the, um, the woman that came to Jesus and said, heal my daughter. And the Bible says, Jesus said unto her that, I cannot heal because I'm sent to the household of God. Amen? He was sent to the members or the children of Israel that had gone astray. He wasn't sent to the Gentiles that are gone. He was sent to only the household of God that had gone astray. That was why when the lady came and said him, I said, no, no, I can't heal you because I'm not sent to you. And she went a step further and said, even though um, dogs, amen, eat under the table, I will still take that one. She got that own by faith. But the statement was that I'm not sent to but the lost sheep of Israel. I'm not sent to anyone but so, which means that before there was a limitation. Those that you should love, which we can say in our own context, is that initially it was love your brother and sister. Are you, are you, are you, are you a Christian? Say yes, I love you. Are you you're, not, you're not a Christian. I, I just came from the nightclub. I don't I hate you. Do you understand what I'm saying? Or maybe in your school, you say, ah, how many of you are Christians? Ah, I go to church, I love you. Say, ah, um, I have to go and pray in the mosque. Ah, I don't, I hate you. You're a Muslim. I don't, I don't. That was in the old. When Jesus died and rose again, he broke those limitations. Hallelujah. That was why he had to change the mindset of all the disciples. He told them that, yes, you will start here, but you will not stop here. You have to leave the house of God, so to say, leave the church. Leave choir department, prayer department, uh, ushers. You understand? You know, cliques, our groups. Go out to those that are living in sin, that don't know Christ at all. Go to places where God has not gotten there before. There are places that people are starving for the word. They don't even know there's a way out. They, they, see, all the things you have seen, some of, some of you, you've been in a service, oh, and the, the atmosphere is very charged, and God performed miracles, people are healed. So people have never seen that before in their life. They don't even know that it's possible. They've not even heard it before. Are, are you with me? If they hear it, it's a lie. That's what they'll say. But you, you have seen it. So you know, there's, you know that there's God is alive. So his expectation is that you go into those places and tell them that's how to show love. That's how to do what? In Acts, there was a, a man had a vision. He saw an animal coming, dropping from the sky. And it was like a four-legged beast. And the animal came in the vision of his, of his dream and he heard a voice. Take and eat. Ah, he said, no. Me? He said, I've been told in church that don't eat unclean animals. He said, eat. He said, no. Then he heard a voice again. He said, how can you call what I have cleansed? Hallelujah. Amen? Unclean. Which means that when Jesus died and the blood, he said, the Bible says when he was on the cross, that they pierced his body and blood and water came out and touched the ground. That day, 
was the cleansing of humanity. Which means on that day, his blood has cleansed everyone. There's no one that is, is or has seen is too bad for God to save. There's, he said, even as dirty as the scarlet, he will make it as white as what? As snow. And after that vision, they knocked a door and told him, they need you in someone's house, Cornelius' house. He was wondering, we don't have anything to do with such kind of people. They shouldn't see me in that kind of place. But he remembered the dream. You cannot call what I've blessed, cleansed, dirty. And he went there. And that was his own first encounter where he saw people that were not supposed to be in, in Christ being saved. Some shall I for that? From today, from today, your, your gate man, your taxi driver, the woman that is selling meat for you at the market, amen? Your colleague in the office, your boss, everyone, everyone deserves to be saved. Hallelujah. That lady that is haunting you in the office deserves what to be what? Everyone that is fighting you deserves what to be what? So from today, we're living, we're living here with a new love in our hearts. Love for who? All. Love everyone with a pure heart. That was, that's the pride that Jesus came to pay. That we will love as he loved us. And his own love for us was unconditional. He loved us whilst we were in sin, which means that we were to love too unconditional. And we are to love even if the person is hurting us. My prayer for someone here is that from today, your love will be like Christ's love. Amen. All eyes closed, please. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world, that he, gave, that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever, 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 a Jew, a Hindu, American, Indian, black, anyone, that will believe in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. All that is required is for you just to believe in Jesus Christ. That he came to this world, he died, and he rose again. And he died for you and for me. And because of his death, you deserve a better life. If you are here and you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ yet, and you have heard that he loves you, and you can feel his love in your heart, as all eyes are closed, I might not call you out, I might not even ask you to rise up. The only thing I want is just for, I want to see your hand lifted up. If you're saying in your heart that I want Jesus to come into my heart. I want him to be my Lord and my Savior. As all eyes are closed, it's between you and between God and himself. He's the one that died for you. He's the one that paid the price for you. And you're saying that, Jesus, I want you to come into my heart. Come and be my Lord and my Savior. Lift that hand clearly up. Lift it up clearly. 
Thank you for those hands. I see that hand. If you have a card in your hand, you can bring your hand down. If you don't have a card in your hand yet, just please lift that hand up. Jesus, come into my life. Come and be my Lord and my Savior. Thank you, Lord, for those hands. Put those hands down. And I want us to pray together. You say, Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your only begotten Son to this world to die for my sin. I confess my sin. Jesus, forgive me. Come and be my Lord and my Savior. I accept you into my life in Jesus' name. Thank you. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. After the service, let's all shout a big hallelujah for that. For those that have a card in your hand and you pray that prayer, after the service, I want to see you briefly. Amen. And the Lord bless you. The Lord increase you. The Lord multiply you in Jesus' name. And I pray for everyone here that as you have known the Lord, you know him to the very end. And I pray again for you that on that day, on that faithful day, when he sees you, he will say, welcome. He will say, welcome. He will say, welcome. In the name of Jesus. And I want to say something to everyone here. One is, a, is to give your life to Christ. But it's another thing to be faithful to the very end. Many times, we give our life to Christ and we fall out of fellowship with him. Our heart is so far, even though we're physically present in church. Our heart is so far. But there's always a witness in our heart that knows, that tells us that we're not in right standing with God. But many times, because people know us as Christians, and we say, how can I give my life or dedicate my life? People will see me and, and wonder, what sin did he commit? Or what sin has she committed? But the key is that On that day, every man before God, every woman before God. If you are not in right standing, you're going to church, they might call you brother, call you sister, they can even give you a title, the king, pastor, prophet, evangelist. Doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything. So make sure that you are in right standing with God. You are in right standing with God. And one thing you also need to know is that that the word approves it does not mean that God approves it. That is acceptable in the world does not mean it's acceptable in heaven. God does not change. He's the same yesterday, the same today, the same forever. What he didn't take 100 years ago, he won't take it today. Amen? That's why check yourself every time and make sure that you are in right standing with God. Live a holy life. Don't compromise. Do not compromise. Because no one knows the hour, the day, 
the moment. He says it comes like a thief in the night. No one expects a thief is coming. It takes you by surprise. So all eyes close one more time. I believe there's some people here that you need to speak to the Lord yourself. Speak to the Lord yourself. You're the one that know where you are now with God. Speak to him where you are now with him. Do you have unforgiveness? Are you holding someone in your heart? Has someone offended you that you have not released? Are there addictions in your life? That you are struggling with? Do you have secret sins in your life? Are there things in your life that you, you don't want anyone to know? But you are struggling with it. Tell the Lord as it is. Tell him as it is. And ask him to help you. Tell him to forgive you. I don't want to miss heaven. I don't want to miss heaven. I don't want to miss heaven. If heaven is real. I don't want to miss it. Anything in my life that will not allow me to see you on that day, Lord, take away from me. Take away from me. I have loved you before. But my heart is not, he's not, I'm struggling to love you again. I've served you before with love and passion. But the passion is no longer there. I remember how I used to start, how I started with you. But Lord, take me back. Take me back. Tell him as it is. Things that you are struggling with that makes you feel unworthy to serve him again. Tell him to wash you, wash you in his blood and give you a new beginning. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying.